Good morning. Good morning again. We are into, is it the third day, the fourth day? Um, we're going to talk about prisoners today and we're going to be looking at Psalm 107 and we're reading from verse 10. Right, I shall read from verse 10 of Psalm 107. Some sat in darkness and the deepest gloom, prisoners suffering in iron chains, for they had rebelled against the words of God and despised the counsel of the Most High. So he subjected them to bitter labour and stumbled, and there was no one to help. They then cried to the Lord in their trouble. Then he saved them from their distress. He brought them out of darkness and the deepest gloom and broke away their chains. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his unfailing love, for his wonderful deeds for men. For he breaks down gates of bronze and cuts through bars of iron. Well, here were people in prison and they were in prison because of their own um, deeds. Sometimes um, we get ourselves into all kinds of trouble when we make mistakes. Um, these problems were self-inflicted problems. And sometimes we feel, if my problems are self-inflicted, God won't help me. He'll kind of say to me, well, you've made your bed, now you can lie on it. But this psalm tells us something different. Uh, maybe some wrong relationships that you've been involved with. Some financial mismanagement. Maybe drugs or alcohol or some bad decisions or other. Now, King Solomon, the Bible says about King Solomon, there was none so loved of his God than Solomon. And he was the wisest man, the, the scriptures say, that lived. But when he was old, he had made many alliances, marriage alliances with neighbouring uh, countries. And those neighbouring countries all worshipped foreign gods. And Solomon, this great king of Israel, built shrines and, uh, and places of worship for these foreign gods and he departed from the Lord and this is what the, it says in the book of Kings in Solomon's old age they, they his wives turned his heart to worship other gods instead of being completely faithful to the Lord his God as his father David had been Solomon worshipped Ashtaroth the goddess of the Sidonians and Molech the detestable god of the Ammonites in this way, Solomon did what was evil in the Lord's sight and he refused to follow the Lord completely as his father David had done. It went on to say the Lord was angry with Solomon for his heart was turned away from the Lord, the God of Israel, who had appeared to him twice. The Lord had told him about this twice. There was another king, Jehoiakim. Chin. In the Bible, if, when you read it, there's Jehoiachin and Jehoiakim. It sounded like this is Jehoiachin. And uh, he had rebelled against the Babylonian king and they killed his two sons and then they gouged out Jehoiachin's eyes. It was a gruesome. terrible, <laughs> gruesome, goodness <laughs> me, yeah. Oh, life was very gruesome in those days. And Jehoiachin is in prison. He's in prison in Babylon. But another king arises, and this is what it says. In the 37th year of the exile of King Jehoiachin of Judah, evil Merodach ascended to the Babylonian throne. He was kind to Jehoiachin, released him from prison on April the 2nd of that year. He spoke kindly to Jehoiachin, and gave him a higher place than all the other exiled kings in Babylon. He supplied Jehoiachin with some new clothes to replace his prison garb, allowed him to dine in the king's presence for the rest of his life. So the Babylonian king gave him regular food allowance as long as he lived. Some people think I've gone too far this time. I've 
offended. I've done it wrong. God will never hear me again, never answer me. And you're in chains of sometimes guilt or fear or addiction or bitterness. Sometimes bitterness can overcome people or financial mismanagement. But the encouraging word from this passage is, then they cried to the Lord in their trouble. They're in prison, it's their own fault, but they cried to the Lord in their trouble and he heard them and he brought them out of darkness into his light. Mm -hmm. He says, let them thank the Lord and mm -hmm. praise God for his unfailing love. Now, do you remember, well, you do remember Eddie. Yeah. He used to frighten you to death, didn't he? Yeah, well, Eddie and Louise. Louise, uh, they, were, they were a married couple and they had two children. And we've had many people living with us all the time, but we had Louise living with her two children because of Eddie's alcoholism and very, very deep, uh, he, he was really in a bad way, wasn't violent, he? Very yeah. violent yeah. and very scary at times. And uh, when he was, was had alcohol, when he hadn't got any alcohol, he was as quiet as a mouse and you couldn't get a word out of him. But I remember one particular time, very often, uh, David would be called out at midnight because Louise, uh, uh, Eddie was up at their house again and creating problems. But anyway, he was in and out of prison a lot. This is his, his own testimony he, uh, uh, about... The police, um, he, he, in fact, I think one, he, what he shared at one time when he shared his testimony was, uh, you've heard of Eddie Kruger, Nightmare on Elm Street. He was Eddie, Nightmare on Every Street. Yeah. And uh, that, that was his life. And anyway, he was in prison again. And he knew he would probably have to go down. He was uh, in, in prison. They brought him in because I think he hadn't turned up at well, some... In the cells, wasn't In the it? cells, because yeah. he, he yeah. hadn't turned up for his parole, uh, something anyway that they have to do. And he knew for certain he would probably go into prison. And he remembered that David had once said to him, Eddie, you need to open up your heart and, 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 and to Jesus and, and, and let him come in. And as he was in the prison cell, he remembered what, uh, what David had said. And he said, God, if you can get me out of this and I, 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 I won't go to prison, I promise you I'll go to church when I get out. And he said at that moment, and this was his own words, he felt that he'd opened up his heart and he said God came in and gave him the biggest burial he'd ever had. Mm -hmm. And he was in there because of his own wrongdoing. But God met him without anybody else there. And he just responded to God, and he, he's it's just a, it's just lovely now when they come down and visit us to see him with his hands raised praising God when you wouldn't have got a word out of him, oh. and he's sober and in his right mind, and it's just an amazing testament to God's yeah. goodness when we would say we don't yeah. deserve it. I very often say, uh, God's so good to me and. Uh, uh, better than what I deserve and I think mm. we all could say that yeah. you know uh, none they, of us they were divorced this. at the time weren't yeah, they yeah they were but then they and 12 years uh, they came he did go back to church he, he, did, he fulfilled his promise uh, saw his wife again who didn't want anything to do with them at the time but uh, after 12 years of being divorced they actually got remarried and they're a very happy family yeah. and the son yeah. is going on with God so a great great story so he brought them out of prison mm. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and his wonderful works to the children of men. And wherever you are this morning, whatever prison you might feel or whatever restriction or restraint you might feel, cry out to God like these people. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble mm. and he saved them out of their distresses. Amen. Amen. Now, are you going to pray for us this morning? Yes. Yeah. Mm. We thank you, Father, that there's no one gone beyond your reach or your kindness or your goodness or your mercy. And thank you for the people that you've touched and you've reached out to, people who have been in despair and have no hope. And we just thank you that you give hope and you give us a place to stay. You give us a place of, of, of uh, protection. And so, Father, I thank you that all can come to you no matter what, where we are and where we've been. And we just pray for people who are just in that situation today, this morning, that, Lord, you will just speak to them and just help them through the difficult time. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. See you tomorrow.